Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, as we continue to gather, uh, church has never been closed. It's just been meeting differently. Um, and so that's one of the things of church is that we always continue. Uh, the church is eternal uh, because we serve and we are part of the body of Christ, which in this season of Easter, we remember, is eternal. Welcome one and all in worship. Uh, on the screen, there was a, a reminder um, about uh, that on this Wednesday at 7 p.m., there will be uh, email com an email coming out with information about it, uh, is um, a congregational uh, update. A meeting makes it sound like there's going to be big votes and stuff like that, but no, it's, it's a congregational update to get people um, caught up to speed. It's been a month since we've done that. Uh, just to let people know where we are and some of the trajectories of certain things um, that we are looking at going forward. Uh, so stay tuned for more information about that. And as always, remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we gather in worship. Uh, we gather in praise of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Welcome one and all to our 8 a.m. worship. Uh, here at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Tucson. And so as we continue to gather and uh, get connected, a uh, reminder to, you know, kind of set the, the scene for you. I mean, yes, you know, we may not be in a building that we normally label very simply as a church, but no, we are the church. And so, but it's important to help remember to set aside some things. And so um, I invite you to, if you have a candle, to light a candle to remind you of the presence of Christ. Um, we will be doing a Thanksgiving for baptism. So if you have some water handy, and as well, if you are participating in the communion service later in the service, it helps if uh, you have those elements handy. But while we continue to prepare physically, may we also prepare spiritually through music.
You know, oftentimes the church is accused of only being only after your money. Um, and especially since I guess I'm almost kind of a pseudo telev televangelist right now uh, without the big hair. Um, it's, it almost seems more so. But in all honesty, nope, 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 we're after your blood too. Uh, no, we're not after your blood. The Red Cross is, uh, with all the things going on, it makes it a little bit more fun for people to collect and things like that. But uh, their need is still there. And so next week at the church building in Werner Hall will be a blood drive, a Red Cross blood drive from eight till two. Uh, you can go to the, you know, call the Red Cross or go online and look and you can schedule an appointment. Uh, one of the benefits of being online is, you know, you can set up and go whenever, or because we're recorded, it'll be on, you know, we put it up in, uh, onto the YouTube page as soon as possible. So whenever you can, I know I'm trying to f schedule when I'm doing it, but since we do these things live for you, well, it'll be probably sometime in the afternoon that I'll be able to go, but I'm already planning on going as well. So uh, thank you. And this is a great way to, you know, show love and care for one another. As we, you know, remember the gift of you know, the gift of blood, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the blood that we can give to others to give them life. Uh, we remember being washed clean, not only by the blood of the Lamb, but also by the waters of baptism. And so we come to this Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are, joined, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, from the beginning you get, created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden in the desert. You promised pools of water for the parched. And you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, our baptismal waters, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirst and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Day by day, your mercies, Lord, attend me, bringing comfort to my anxious soul. Day by day, the blessings, Lord, you send me, draw me nearer to my heavenly goal. Lord of divine, beyond all mortal measure, Brings to naught the burdens of my quest. Savior, lead me to the home I treasure, where at last I'll find eternal rest. Day by day, I know that you'll provide me strength to serve and wisdom to obey. I will see your loving will to guide me o'er the paths I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil of the morrow. I will trust in your enduring grace. Savior, help me bear life's pain and sorrow till in Oh, what joy to know that you are near me when my burdens grow too great.
great to bear. Oh, what joy to know that you are near me when I come, oh Lord, to you in prayer. Day by day, no matter what betide me, you will hold me ever in your hand. Savior, with your presence here to guide me, I will reach at last the promised land. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Um, we have the reading somewhere. No slides. We sent we sent it to you, Jerry. Um, oh, I guess not. Oh. I'm sorry. Tell me where in, in, uh, in Acts it is, I'll look it up. I just re sent it to you, Jerry. It's attached as the day's text. Have your Bible handy? It's Acts 1. Yes, I do. Acts 1. That works. We can preach from the book. Acts 1, starting at verse 6 through 14. Uh, starting with, so when they met together. Acts 1, verse 6. When the apostles come together. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. And a cloud hit him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, 
a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, for the psalm, um, Jerry, will you read the, the light? And Heidi, will you respond, please, for the congregation? Let God arise, and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defenders of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom but the rebels shall live in desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness. The earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O oh God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. He is risen. Alleluia. <laughs> Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. And this day we, uh, our, gospel will come, our gospel and our sermon will come to us uh, through the ability of us to be church together no matter where we are. And so on this day, our message is brought to you by the Reverend uh, Jackie Pagel, who is the assistant to the bishop uh, for Grand Canyon Synod for candidacy. And so I know that at least one member of our congregation has a sister that's been working with her and going through her seminary uh, journey together. And so let us hear the word proclaimed and read by, Dr. by Reverend Pagel. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. 
since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you have gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your name with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you, from the word that you have gave to me. I have given to them and they have received them and know that in truth I came from you and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those who you have gave to me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, sisters and brothers. Greetings on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Greetings from Bishop Deborah Hutterer and her staff at the Grand Canyon Synod, and greetings from Bishop Elizabeth Eden, our presiding bishop of the ELCA, and her staff at Churchwide in Illinois. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I am Pastor Jackie Pagel, the associate to the bishop for candidacy and faith formation, and I am here to bring you the good news today. Under normal circumstances, I would be with you in your communities celebrating the accomplishments of the graduates in your midst. The graduates from high school, the graduates from college and university, and even the wee little ones that are moving on from preschool to kindergarten. Congratulations to them. You did it! Yay! We used to gather in person on Sundays because that's just what we do. We gather to see our friends, we gather to see our family, we gather to receive the gift of bread and wine, we gather to rejoice. Rejoice in song, rejoice in fellowship, and rejoice in the good news. Through prayer, through the word, and now, now what? Now we gather on the phone, we gather with technology, our desktop, our laptop, our tablet, Maybe you're watching me now on your smart TV. And still, we miss actual touch. We miss sharing the peace. We miss receiving the blessed elements in community by our pastors. And admittedly, we miss the way it used to be. Where is the good news? Where is the hope? What is the point? Now what? Now we still gather. We are still here. Even though we are not able to gather in the numbers we like, it is coming soon. We are the church and we are church together. The good news is we still have Jesus. And more importantly, Jesus has us. Jesus shares in this discourse that occurs close to the end of his ministry, his prayer of thanksgiving to God for giving him them all people. The them is us. God gave Jesus us. In verse 1 and 2, Jesus says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Jesus is thankful for us. We who keep the word and we who know that God loves us no matter what. We belong to him and he to us. Verse 10 says, all mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. To borrow from one of our classic hymns, our hope is nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 
Church may be more th different than it has ever been before in our lifetime. And now is when church gets to be more different than it has ever been in our lifetime. Church is more than the buildings where we gather. Church is more than who's in and who's out. It doesn't matter if you worship on Facebook, YouTube, or a small in-person Bible study. You are still the church and we still have Jesus. Now may be the time that you get to worship outside of your church building where the air is fresh and the people are passing by. Church is the way we understand how to live out our faith in the world we live in now. We will be together soon and we will lift our voices and sing hosannas in the highest. Church is the way we make space for the new people who will join us now that they have seen us online over the internet. Church is the way we keep loving those who are in mourning and who grieve those who have died while we have not been able to celebrate them the way we are used to. Yet we still send them thank you notes, maybe a gift card to get a meal. We still let them know they are loved. Church is the way we continue to support the leaders that are still serving the people. As pastors move to the front lines to give us all the hope that we need to continue to get through these days. As youth leaders continue to present youth group meetings online and via Facebook and on Zoom. As we still visit the shut-ins, even from a distance, to let them know they are loved and not forgotten. Church is the way you remember your baptism when you wash your face every morning. Jesus is thankful for each and every one of you, each of you that plugs in each week to hear your pastor's message, each of you that are trying something new, sending your offerings in online instead of putting them in the plate, each of you that are Zooming all over the world to witness church services you've never seen before, or to go back to places you haven't been in a long, long time. Jesus is thankful for all of you, for all of us, you that miss your grandbabies, you that couldn't wait to get back to your favorite restaurant, you that don't want to admit it, but you miss school, you missed your teachers, you missed your office, and low key, you miss those people that annoy you. You that enjoys the quiet and you're ready to just hear the noise of a group. Jesus is thankful for you. Now is the time that stay strong. Now is the time that we pull a little tighter. Now is the time that we get a little closer. Now is the time that we make sure those we love know it. Now is the time for us to be the church more. You are not in this alone. We are in this together. We get to continue to pray, continue to read, and continue to study scripture. We get to grow into something new something different, and with Jesus, something better. We get to keep the word. The way we go about in the world may be different for us than it has ever been, but the word remains the same. We belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to us. The song I mentioned earlier has a chorus that says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. As the world continues to turn, we get to stand firm. We get to take each step sure-footed, knowing that indeed our place is firm because we are in Jesus and Jesus is in us. May the peace that passes all understanding be yours. Amen. It's been said that uh, Ascension, uh, which, is, uh, which was officially on Thursday, was um, you know, the time when Jesus left. Um, no, actually, as people say, Ascension was the time when Jesus reminded us it's okay to work from home. And so uh, through Zoom or through the Holy Spirit, we continue to gather and we continue to worship and praise God in new and unique ways. 
because our God is loose and out. Uh, thank you, thank you, Reverend Pagel, for that. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to not have to spend several hours this week putting together a sermon uh, so I could take a little bit of a break. Um, but now let us continue in praise with song. start clean. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side, rich wounds yet visible above in beauty glorified. No angels in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bend their burning eyes at mysteries so bright. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Join me as we confess the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, uh, our God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the people, the prayers are, um, we receive numbers of them over this time uh, through what we see and what people have sent in. I put in something in the chat for people to submit some prayer requests there and on Facebook Live and the messaging, because I actually have that up and running. Uh, this morning, I was able to successfully get even that thing up and live for me. So, um, but we collect them through emails and phone calls and Facebook posts over the week and things like that. We will be um, needing to go through the list a little bit because some of them have been on for a while. So if you put a name on a list, and haven't given us an update in a while, please do so. Uh, so we know, uh, should we keep them on? Should we take them off? Should we change uh, what the prayer is about? And so, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, O oh Lord, 
hear our prayer. For all those needing health and healing, especially Ray, Pastor Bob Jones, John, Katie, Jason, Muriel, Patrick Lohr's uncle, Eric, Pat, Ferd, Floyd, Donna, Michael K, Diana, Sherry, Ken, Ann, Ryan, Lynn, Jerry, Bob, Ann, Jasmine, Robin, Lauren, Olivia, Isla, Darren, Linda, Gay, Susan, Bob and Mary, Paul, Kathy, Molly, Connie, Russell, ML, Connie, GC, Frank, Irene. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all those dealing with cancer, especially Carol, Tony, Don, Bill, JR, Michelle, Carol, Heidi, Susan, Roy, Janet, Nils, Hannah, Drew, KW, Rachel, and Shannon. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, healthcare workers, and those who work in close contact with lots of people and is necessary. And so we lift up Greg, Kara, Aaron, Matthew, Randy, Emma, Michelle, Erica, Nancy, Linda, Susan, Sarah, Rachel and her team, Mark, the corrections officers, the store workers, and all those others who work in close proximity to one another and often are faced with the difficulty of enforcing store policies that some people don't want to follow. Keep them safe. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. prayer to add to the first responders we also lift up Christine that one just came in for all those who mourn especially the family and friends of Jean Templer Connie Kennedy Dowell Marjorie Levon Seward Jerry Tompkins Jan McCoy the grandmother of Shanna Huber David Friedman Beverly Williams the family and friends of Teresa Joyce O'Rourke the hundred thousand who've died of COVID in the United States in the last three months. And on this Memorial Day weekend, all who gave their lives in defense of this country and of other people in the service of life and freedom. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. those in the Navajo Nation and the Sioux Nation and several of other the First Nation places not only dealing with crippling poverty but also the effects of this virus and the, what is all doing for them. May support, comfort, and healing come. For those who have health concerns that make this time even more scary, for those who are 
who've had cancer for those who are immunosuppressed or compromised for any reason whatsoever, for all of those who are uncertain as to what any contact with another person may bring for their fear. May they know they're not alone. For those that are feeling alone and isolated at this point in time, for those who are struggling to make ends meet and are dealing with unemployment, for the small business owners who are struggling to keep going, for those who are just seeking to get by in this time and place. We ask your protection and provision, dear Lord, and for us as the church to respond. And so we ask your blessings upon our leadership, our elected leadership and our churches. May they respond to people in need. May they be able to care and lift up the lowly as you proclaimed in the Psalms you do. May we all work together to make sure that the lowly are cared for as you would have us. But also on this weekend, we give thanks for the graduates. We celebrate with them even as they're unable to, to truly celebrate the ways they used to in the past. Congratulations, blessings upon your accomplishments, blessings upon your future and all that is before you for what you have accomplished amazing things and nothing takes that away. Blessings on your future as you go forward. And in this gift of life, this life that we protect and we share by the measures we take, we just give thanks for all of it and for the ways in which we respond. So we give thanks for the response for everyone who gave for Paz Cafe and the work that Tihan has done. We give you thanks for those who will be giving blood in a week and for all of those life-giving services of the Red Cross, for Lutheran Social Services and all the other ways in which we can provide and care for the last, the least, the little, and the lost. All the different ways we may proclaim God's mercy and love in Jesus Christ. Thank you to all who responded to make it possible. And so we celebrate this life. And so we, we give thanks and celebrate the birthdays of Craig and Craig, Fennel and Johnson, Lori, and Dick, and Dennis, and the anniversaries of Jody and Corey, and Colleen and Craig. And for all those other signs of life, those signs that life comes through, that Easter is real, we give you thanks. May we celebrate them, may we share them, may we proclaim them in word and deed. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. This is a time of sharing the peace. But then again, we do this in church, not just to say, okay, now you're done, but we do this in church to celebrate and to share and to practice this, which we need to do in the world. And so again, as in the church, you know, we, have, we can't do it the way we used to in the church. Okay, chat, text messages, phone calls, cards, everything. There are so many ways that we can still share the peace. The church, continues to serve and to share. This is our calling and our life. So find ways to continue to share the peace of Christ with the world. Here's my time to be televangelist. Well, no, it's not that way. Um, but just a reminder, since again, one of the other things we normally do at this time is we pass a plate uh, to collect your responses to God's blessings to you. Uh, well, we can't do that. And even if we were back in the building, we shouldn't do anything like that. So um, the mail still works. We still get the mail. Do you wanna send checks into that? Um, there is also obviously some different electronic giving options that Reverend Pagel commented about, uh, but we have ours that are set up on our website. 
And again, you know, thank you again for those who, you know, for all of you who keep continue to give so we can keep going, uh, keep, you know, keep moving forward as the church has never closed uh, and we keep going. Um, but also, um, you know, thank you to those who, you know, made, you've made those donations of Paz Cafe. Thank you for all those considering to give a blood donation next week for the Red Cross and all the other ways that we continue to support one another and to proclaim new life and love. Thank you. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Now is the time, if you are going to participate in the communion service, to uh, have the items handy. Again, uh, you know, as a pastor, I have things that look like communion items, uh, but that's because I'm a pastor. Um, simple glass, simple plate, wine, grape juice, crackers, bread. Christ comes into our midst in the simple and makes it profound. And so um, we, ha you know, have those items gathered and we celebrate together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Brothers and sisters, we still gather as the church. We gather no matter where we are. One of the amazing things of communion is it is a truly a meal for all time. It unites us with those who have gone before and those yet to come, as well as those who celebrate this meal across this entire world. It is something that is amazing to remember and to consider that this celebration is one that is always done in the family, the family of God, no matter where we are. You know, if you stop and think about the way some churches are designed, especially like in the Midwest or whatever, and you have communion rails, you know, and sometimes it's like a partial circle that comes out, or some it's even like three sides of a square in the altar. You ever realize the fact that the symbol continues and that other side includes all of those other people I just mentioned? Those who came before, those who have yet to come, and those around the world, as we remember a God in Jesus who rose from the dead and ascended to heaven and sent the advocate to continue to encourage and sustain us all. And so we give you thanks, dear God, for that promise that promise that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ, that promise of eternal life, that promise of grace and mercy, that promise of love that would, un, would not die. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all the drinks, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so may we remember that where we are, wherever we are, Christ comes to us to sustain us, to feed us, to lift us up yet again, to continue to bring us eternal life through his grace. May we be fed and nourished by your body and blood and by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we go forth in joy 
proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ. Brothers and sisters, we get to celebrate this communion no matter what, because we understand that this is a gift of God's love that sustains and survives and keeps coming no matter what, as a sign of God's grace. And so you have people there that you can share it with. Please share communion with them right there. If you are home alone, well, remember, folks, you're not alone. Um, we are all together in that Christ is with us always until the end of the age. And so the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat, take and drink. Body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Thank you, Craig and Luann, for doing that, for Aaron and Becky helping put all that stuff together. An amazing way, again, of just us being able to still worship together and to share these, these amazing things uh, with one another in a way that is safe and uplifting for all. Uh, thank you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you've opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, as we come to the end of our time together, um, again, we'll have kind of like, I guess, a virtual coffee hour afterwards. Uh, there will be, um, uh, uh, what we'll do is we'll ask you to, we'll unmute you and you can turn on your videos and at least can check in and see one another's faces a little bit in a nice, uh, safe way. Uh, so uh, we'll have uh, Becky play our, her lovely postlude and then we have to show the acknowledgement screens for copyright purposes and then we'll do that. Becky.